Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Kevtech here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Um, I guess happy Wednesday. And today I am making a response video to a video we made last night. So yesterday we made a video on how to deploy software applications using um, uh, PDQ. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's just an application that allows you to basically push out, you know, PDQ is an application that allows you to push out software packages on computers and it's similar to SSEM and a few other applications. So I am making a response video to Donish's video. Um, if I'm gonna put the video below in the description so you can click on it and see it. It's actually a three hour and 30 minute video. It's a software installation and deployment skills and IT career questions, that's, that's the title of the video. So I am making a response video to that because I just want to go over some, like I go over the little things that are important in key factors that you should know or understand. If you're installing any type of software, um, you could just watch the video. Um, uh, the video will be below my description. You could just watch that video and then basically it'll show you what, you know, what we did, what we installed, how to deploy an application, et cetera, et cetera. Um, obviously, if you're new to my channel, I do IT videos, I do content videos, I do IT support videos. I talk about how to get into desktop support, tech support. And I do job interviews as well, and I help people. I help people with their resumes, and I also help people get into IT support. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And let's get right into it. So I'm gonna share my screen with you, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it's just a, a quick video. It should not take that long. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you like, because people have been asking me about this, and I'm just gonna go over it real quick. So software deployment and installation. Um, basically when you're installing applications, a lot of things you need to keep in mind when you're installing applications, you, we don't install things on the fly. It doesn't work that way. When you work in it, um, if you, it, there are people that are, are called E, uh, E, D, E, uh, I think it's called EDC or something like that. There are people that do software deployments that their job is only to deploy software, but part of installing software applications, you need to have the proper approval for it. You cannot just install anything on the fly. It doesn't work that way. So always remember that um, part of IT, no matter what department you work in IT, if you're making some changes, if you're deploying applications, if you're doing something that's gonna affect everyone or something that's gonna affect the infrastructure, you always need to get approval for that. You don't just you don't you just don't do it on the fly. You know you have to get approval for these things before you start, you know, deploying these things or start making changes. So uh, there's an approval there's an approval process. So what do I mean by that? So basically, the manager might have to approve HR. You might have to get compliance approval. You always get approval for installations when you're installing, like you know. Um, like little things like use common sense, little things like Adobe Chrome or Adobe PDF or any of those little things. And, you know, obviously you, you don't, it, you, those are exceptions. You know, those are the things that you're going to need for your job on a day-to-day -day basis. But there's like other things like, like FileZilla or SQL Studio, or if someone wants local admin rights, for example, you know, all these things need, need approval. You know, you don't just do it on the fly, you know, so. Why am, I, why am I saying you need approval for, for applications or software? It's because it might be a vulnerability. So you might have vulnerabilities in your infrastructure. So if you're installing, for example, you're installing Zoom, uh, I'll give that as a hypothetical example, you're installing Zoom or you're installing FileZilla, it might open up breaches or ports or certain things on the back end on your infrastructure. You don't know what, it, what it'll do to your infrastructure. So you wanna, Keep that in mind. You don't just uh, you don't just install things on the fly because you have to ask yourself: Would it hack my my infrastructure? Will it would it open a vulnerability on the infrastructure? Will 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 make a change on a port or a certain um, network infrastructure or a certain system or a certain server? You know, always when you install any of these applications, you need to have approval for it. You just don't install it on the fly. So that's just something that I wanted to go over real quick, and then also. Um, Part of installing applications, um, you have your different types of installing applications. Some people do the local install. So basically what that means is they go on someone's computer physically, go on their computer, they run as admin, they run their admin credentials, and then they install the application. That's one way to install it. Another way to install it is if you have a share drive that's called IT. I've seen, I've seen companies have an IT share drive folder permission. And basically the, 
they go into that share drive and they run the installation from there as admin on the user's machine. That's the second way to do it. A third way to do it is if you use BumGuard or TeamViewer or any of these any of these remote session applications and you just do run as admin or run as yourself and basically you run the application on their behalf and, and that's that's another way of doing it uh another way to do it is if you if you have them sign out of their computer and you log in as yourself and you run the install on, on their on their whole machine when them when, while they're not logged in which is something that i don't recommend because um you know they have work to do and you could just run it as admin when they're logged in as themselves so some people might do this. Some people might just have you log in completely, log off completely, and then they log in as themselves as an admin and they run the installation that way. So it depends on the company. It depends on the IT person. It depends on a lot of different things. Um, then you have your sign installation. So what is a sign installation? So basically it means it's an application that installs on the back end, on the background where the, the user or the client cannot see the installation. So you're either running PDQ, you're running Avanti, you're running SSTM. You're running Alterus and it's running all these applications on the background, but the user does not see it or the client does not see it at all. They don't know what's going on, but it's installing. And then um, obviously when it's done installing, um, they'll see it on their start menu or they'll see it on their desktop and they could just click on it and run it. So those are things you need to keep in mind. You know, obviously there's a shift run as command. So you hold, you hold shift. And you right click on your on the on the icon or the application and you could do run as admin so basically a hypothetical example of that is if you if you um have an installation application like i don't know like this one for example you hold shift from right click and then you run as admin and then if you have an executable file you could run as admin as well so that's basically what it is you hold shift from right click and you run as admin so then things like that. Those are things you need to be you need to be familiar with as a as a IT help desk, desktop support or tech support. And this is this is just level one stuff. This is stuff that you need to know if you're doing level one stuff. That's why I'm going over this. And also, it's because we went over this yesterday, and I wanted to make a short video based on that. So, and that's basically what it is. So, part of installing products or applications, you need to ask yourself when you're installing an application for someone. If you're doing a silent install, which is what I went over, you know, there's Avanti, there's SSCM, there's Altiris, there's PDQ. Is the computer online? Is the computer online? Yes or no? Is the computer on VPN? Yes or no? Um, does it have the necessary components to install the software? What do I mean by that? So some of these installations that you're doing, like for example, Citrix, you might, might, you might need to run C++ runtime. You might need Visual Studio. You might need certain applications or Windows updates on the computer before you could actually install the application. So this is the reason why I stress the importance of having a uniform company, if that makes sense. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. So basically, my idea of my, the way I look at infrastructure from an infrastructure perspective, for me, it's very important that all the computers are running the same updates and all the computers are running, all the computers have, they're running the same computers. Like they have the if someone has a Dell laptop, then everyone else in the office should have a Dell laptop. No one else has Lenovo. No one else has HP. No one else has other kinds of like Microsoft Surface Pros or whatever. You know, we should all have the same infrastructure throughout the whole company, throughout the whole firm. Because when you run these installations, the installs might be different on on another brand or another company versus another brand, or another company. So you want to make sure that you all have the same infrastructure. When you're putting infrastructure in place, you want to make sure you have the same infrastructure because part of IT is having everything uniform, having all the same Windows updates, and also part of IT is that the updates get picked up automatically when a user logs into a computer or, or when a client logs into a computer and all the updates are running on that computer. So you want to keep all that in mind, part of installation, part of deployment. An example of a good help desk IT person is that they're basically, um, you know, Make sure that they, that they have everything up to speed, everything ready. Make sure that they are prepared to run the install. Make sure if you're installing something for someone, you let them know what's going on. You know, you, you communicate with the client or the customer because sometimes like um, Ivanti or Arturis, for example, Arturis, sometimes you, you, they might have something open and it might interfere with the installation. So you want, you want to let them know that you're installing something. You don't want to just install it on the fly, you know? 
you want to let them know because then you install it four times, five times, six times, and it keeps failing. It's because they have Excel open. It's because they have Outlook open. It's because they have a certain application that affiliates with that application and it's open. You know, you want to make sure that they, they, they're, they're aware of it. Make sure you communicate with the client. Make sure you communicate with the customer prior to installing the application. Don't just install it on the fly and then expect it to work, if that makes sense. So it's always important that, that you tell the customer or you tell the client that, listen, I'm running this installation right now on your computer. It might take 15 to 20 minutes, so please bear with me as I'm running this installation. Um, and you, you, you want to take their time when they're going on lunch. You want to take their time when they're free. You want to you wanna have manners. You want to have mannerisms. You want to have... You want to take their time into consideration as well. You know, you, you don't just want to install things on the fly. You want to have consideration for them as well as an individual, as a human being, as a person, because they probably got to go to a meeting. They probably have a call right now. They probably have a meeting right now. And you, you don't want to install it when they're doing a meeting or when they need their computer. You want to install it when they, they're not busy or, or when they have, they're doing something else and you have time to actually jump on their computer and do what you're supposed to do, if that makes sense. So this is just level one basics. I hope this video helps you out. Um, I am gonna leave job skills shares video below this one. So have a look at that video. The video is like three hours and a half long. It's a very long video, but it's definitely worth a watch if that makes sense. And I hope you guys have a great day. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And, and um, if you want to say anything or let me know about this, let me know what you think. Give me your opinions. People that work in IT, give me your opinions. Comment down below. People that are new to IT, maybe you learned something out of this. Comment down below. Let me know. I love. I appreciate input from everyone in IT and everyone in the YouTube community. All right? I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope you guys have a great Wednesday. Take care. Peace. Later.